assign the instruments, you find the instrument that you want to use in the Instruments browser on the right. In this case, on a Mac, I'm going to use audio units because those are the most efficient units and give the best performance on my system. And all of the instruments that I'm going to assign happen to use the contact player. So the easiest way to assign an instrument is to drag the instrument from the instrument browser to the channel that you want to assign it to. This assigns the instrument, assigns it to a contact player, and it opens up the instrument itself. So here is the contact player open waiting to receive a new instrument. In this case it's an English horn. So I'm going to go to Spitfire Studio Woodwinds, open the instruments browser, and find the English horn, which of course in this case is named Coran Le. I double click it, and it assigns that instrument and loads it. Since I'm using UACC controllers, I have to do a couple of more things to make certain that the Spitfire instrument in contact is ready to play. I click the wrench button and I go down here to this little lock symbol and use the drop, not drop down to lock this instrument to UACC. If you remember, my rule sets in Notion use the UACC system. So I'm going to select that, and now that instrument is ready to play. And it will play back all the articulations that it's set to play. You'll note that it skipped a note. You probably caught that. That's a little quirk, and I'll show you how to fix that. But that's basically how you assign instruments. You do it for every one. Um, drag, drop. It opens a new contact instance. And you select the instrument that you want to use. In this case, it's a clarinet solo. Again, I have to tell this instrument that it's going to be receiving UACC articulation switches. And so now it's ready to go. Okay, let's look at a couple other things. I like to assign colors to my tracks uh, to keep things organized and to make it uh, aesthetically a little more pleasing for me while I'm working with this file. When I assign a color in Studio One, it also changes the color for that channel, corresponding channel, in the mixer. But one thing you'll notice is that the channel names are different from the track names. There's an easy way to fix this. If you select all the tracks by using click and shift and right click on any of them and use this command at the bottom, apply track names to channels, it will magically change the channel names to match the track names, which is very, very helpful. So that's a little trick. No extra charge for that one. So I've gone ahead and assigned all of the instruments and the thing uh, sounds okay. It, it uh, is getting all the articulations correct, but there's some timing issues and there's uh, also dynamics which aren't reflected um, because they aren't being passed by the rule set from Notion to Studio One. One thing that I do typically do um, is I will uh, select all of the uh, all of the first chairs. staves in Notion, 
and I'll right click and under tools I'll go to randomize events and I'll modify those slightly maybe 4% for note beginnings 6% for note endings, something like that very slight modification hit OK and that doesn't change these notes yet in order to do that you go back to the original command in Notion send to Studio One. You make certain that this merge into open document is checked. That means it's going to merge the note data into the document in Studio One that's already open. And then we send the notes. And that will update the notes in Studio One, these note links that we just modified in Notion. So that's really helpful. Let's give a listen to a little bit of this just to see what it sounds like so far. Okay, a lot of work to be done, but we're getting there. There's the basics. All the instruments are in place. All the instruments are playing back. So next I'm going to show you how to modify automation, different parameters for uh, dynamics and for other uh, modifications to the sound of the instruments that are in Studio One.